Hi, it's Deanna from Futures Past, and tonight I'm going to show you a plethora of different antique dolls. And there's all different kinds of uh, styles, and I'm going to show you one by one what style they are and how different they are from each other. So um, the multitude of these dolls are German, except for one is Italian, and one is vintage, and the rest are all antique. So the one I'm going to begin with is on the bottom left corner. And this one is considered a China head doll. And it's a German China head doll. And as you can see, she has molded hair. And China head dolls had glazing over the porcelain. This one is quite pretty. I'm unsure of her maker, but she's unmistakably German. She has her original gown on. And it's really pretty, as you can see here. It's a pretty organdy material. And it's quite elaborate. Underneath, she has petticoats and slips. And she has little china feet. So these china head dolls had a body that was made out of cloth. The legs and the feet were made out of china. And the arms were also made out of china, as you can see here. This is considered a lowbrow china head doll. And earlier ones had a higher hairline, and they would consider highbrow china head dolls. So now we have uh, an explanation for that type of doll. We're going to go on to the next. And the next one is a German doll. And she was made by the firm of Kessner. And Johann Daniel Kessner began producing high-quality paper mache heads and peg jointed wooden dolls in 1805 in Walter House in Germany. And Kessner dolls um, didn't uh, become prolific until the probably like 1880s, 1890s and early 1900s. And uh, the, the, the crafts, craftsmanship on Kessner dolls are beautiful. This was a consistent product. Kessner always made high-quality dolls. His painting of the doll faces were exquisite. And his dolls um, around this time, which would be the 1880s to the early 1900s, were made out of bisque. And most of his dolls had either kid le leather bodies, which were known as shoulder head dolls, or jointed composition and wood bodies, which swiveled and were able to be articulated in different poses. This particular one is a shoulder head, and her bisque head is on a kid leather body, and her head is not posable or movable, and her body is also stationary on a kid leather body and is not posable. She has her original dress on, and it's a lovely olive colored green with embroidered lace, a ribbon, and she's wearing a mohair wig, and she has an original hat. The only thing that's not original about her hat is the silk flower that someone had placed on it after the fact. So someone added that flower on later on um, over probably the mid-century or so. As you can see, it's like a pretty straw material. And her dress is quite pretty. It has some wear. That's normal due to age because this particular one was probably made in the 1890s. And as you can see, she has a lovely bisque. She has an open mouth with teeth, feathered eyebrows, hand-blown glass sleep eyes. Um, some of these dolls came with closed mouths, and the later ones had open mouths with teeth. Their earlier dolls had closed mouths, and I'll show you her undergarments. She has layers of petticoats and slips. She's missing her shoes, sadly. So now the next one I'm going to show you is what's known as, now I'm going to pronounce it wrong, because I'm not French, and I'm not uh, proficient in foreign languages. But this one is a min, mignonette, and that means small, I believe, in French. But this is a German doll. And uh, she's a German doll made by the firm of Gebruda Kunlenz, and she has a socket head on a jointed composition and wood body. She has her original antique outfit on, which is actually, she was a souvenir doll of the day. And it depicts a folklore costume of uh, ethnicity of another country. And I believe this might be, might be Swedish or Dutch or 
something like that. I have uh, no knowledge of what country this depicts. And as you can see, she's quite pretty. She has glass eyes, an open mouth with teeth, her original threadbare human hair wig, and beading around her neck. That was a little necklace. She has little chains on her outfit, an apron made out of silk, and her body, excuse the noise in the background, it's my daughter coming home. And the dogs are going wild, and that thumping sound you hear is my large mastiff dog's tail wagging and banging on the wall. Um, she has little pantaloons underneath. So now picture this, a doll this tiny that fits in the palm of my hand is so detailed. And that's a, a German product for you. They were uh, very, very uh, great at making small things beautiful. Usually min mignonette dolls um, were French. The French were more known for these little diminutive dolls but uh, Germans made them as well. And my Mastiff is walking into the kitchen right now, interrupting my video, but that's okay. <laughs> the next doll I'm gonna show you is the one that I mentioned earlier that is not antique, but nonetheless, it's old. And this is Italian, and it's a, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, so don't laugh. It's a Lenchi doll, I believe, or Lenci doll. And Apollo is coming over to me right now to photobomb and to distract me, and I have ADD, so this is not easy. Um, so back to the Lenci doll or Lenci doll. So Lenci dolls were made in Turin, Italy. They're pressed felt dolls, and the company operated making these dolls from about 1919 to 1944 or so. Um, it was uh, started by Enrico um, and Elena Lenci Savini, and this one is probably from the 1940s, Possibly a little earlier than the 1940s or possibly um, the late 1940s. I'm unsure. I don't know which model this is. And she's wearing a little Italian peasant regional ethnic folklore costume. And it's quite detailed, as you can see. She has little needle-stitched felted hands with individual fingers. And her uh, costume, part of it is made out of felt as well with little applied flowers. Underneath, she has little felt shoes and socks and undergarments, and she's quite sweet. She has her original box, and I'll show you it in a moment. And the boxes of Lency dolls, Len Lenchi or Lency, feel free to correct me in the comments below, were quite graphic, and it uh, was very colorful and pretty. The box was just as pretty as the doll, actually. You can see, like, little scenes. And let me turn it to the back and the same thing. And I think that's quite interesting. She's in uh, really good shape. She was uh, always kept in this box. And she's quite sweet. I think she's Sardinian. The next doll I'm going to show you. And again, don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, so please don't laugh. Is... A Parian doll and like China head dolls the Parian dolls were similar but they were unglazed and so they did not have a shine to it like these dolls I'll show you a comparison so you see how this one has a glaze and this one is more, more uh, like very uh, matte well this one is German as well I don't know the maker unfortunately it has molded curls on the top of her head she's a low brow style so she's uh, not not as early she's probably about 1890 maybe slightly a little earlier and she's wearing a really pretty silk costume I think it may be original to her I'm unsure and what I really like about her is instead of having parry on hands she has little leather individually stitched fingers and uh, that's quite detailed because they're tiny as you can see compared to my fingers this is really a tiny little hand. And her body is also made out of leather, kid leather to be precise. And she has little black shoes on. I don't know if they're original, I don't think they are. But her undergarments are. And they're made out of cotton with lace. And her dress, again, I don't know if it's original. It looks very old. It's made out of silk and it has mother of pearl buttons. 
and she's uh, quite pretty. She has a little closed mouth with a pensive little look on her face. I'll show you the back. And you can see the costume is equally as elaborate. So the next doll I'm going to show you now is, believe it or not, a lot of people would take one look at this and think this was German. This is not a German bisque head socket head doll. Now socket head, I, by that I mean that this is a jointed composition body that is swivel, you can swivel it in all different directions including the head. And uh, the other one that I showed you by Kessner had a uh, shoulder head body which was on a kid leather body and it was not movable like these uh, composition and wood bodies. And this one, like I said, a lot of people would take one look at this and think this was a German doll, but she's not. And she was made by Schreyer and Fingerhut, and it's really considered a Russian doll. And it's sort of like iffy about the company. There's not too much info on it. And excuse that a moment. Of course, something like this always has to happen in my video, but it's all good. Bloopers are just something you can't avoid. So back to what I was saying. So she's sort of like a Russian Polish doll. And what I mean by that was at the time of the making of this doll, there was uh, the border of Russia was actually where Poland uh, used to be. And uh, so it was made by a Polish family on the Russian uh, border. And uh, it's quite beautiful. It's a really lovely doll. And there's not too many of these around, unfortunately. You don't see too many uh, Schreyer and Fingerhut dolls. She's wearing, again, another one of those regional folklore costumes, and she was a souvenir doll at the time, showing people what it was like in different countries and what the national ethnic costumes were. She's in great shape with that original costume. She's about 1890 to 1900, possibly earlier, a little earlier than 1890. She could be the late 1880s, I'm unsure, but she's old and she has uh, glass eyes, an open mouth with teeth, really, really pretty feathered eyelashes. And her eyebrows are hand painted. She has a, what uh, appears to be a human hair wig and uh, she's quite lovely. And last, but not least, now we get into the end here. You just put this one back here. This one is another shoulder head doll. It's German and it's on a kid leather body. And it was made by the firm of Armand Massé. It sounds like a French name, but it's not. It's a German doll maker. And uh, Armand Massé was uh, from Sonnenberg and Koppelsdorf in Thuringia. Germany, and it was the world's largest known doll manufacturer from 1885 to the 1950s. This particular one's on a kid leather body. She has a mohair wig, her original folklore regional costume. Again, I don't know what country this uh, represents, but it's amazing when you have a doll like this with original costume showing you different ethnicities of the day. The hat has a lot of detail on it. It's a replica of the original costume of a certain country of the time. It's well made, as you can see. And that's her original leather shoes and stockings and pant pantaloons and uh, petticoat underneath. And again, she's on a kid leather body with bisque hands and she's quite pretty. So now we got the whole crew together and I'm glad I got to share them with you. Sorry for the bloopers and the dog interruptions and all sorts of beeping sounds and my kid barging in the door, but it's all good. It's all part of uh, making a regular video. I'm not a, you know, I'm not one of those fancy people that make uh, real professional videos. This is just coming from my collection, from my heart, and I'm glad you got to watch. So if you like what you see, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And I'm glad you may have learned something. If you're just a beginning doll collector, now you know more about different styles of antique dolls. Thanks for watching.